Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Big, big show tonight, right? Good, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. One person out of 210 in the audience agrees with me. No, we have a great... We have such, such... No, you were right. Uh, we have such a good show. Such a good show tonight. A lot of fun people are here. We've got some fun stuff planned. I dressed for this show. And, thank you. And, uh... I gotta talk, first of all, this is a story that I mentioned yesterday, but it's a story that's so good. This story will not go away. It's that good. I don't know who's heard what I'm talking about. This is a true story. Earlier this week, Stevie Wonder performed at a concert in Washington. He's up on stage performing. President Bush wanted to get his attention, so he started waving to him <laughs> from the audience. <laughs> waving to him. True story. Yeah, and uh, yeah. afterwards, the president said, I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was Stevie Wonder. I thought it was Ray Charles. <laughs> he felt terrible. He felt terrible about it. He was just terrible. <laughs> That's my favorite story. Any uh, baseball fans with us? Okay. All, right. okay, all right. I'm a field hockey guy myself. Anyway, uh, ow! Um, Baseball season get, getting started soon. Spring training is underway, and this is true. One of the players trying to make the major leagues this year is Derek Hasselhoff, David Hasselhoff's cousin. <laughs> he's trying to get on. So you can actually, you can tell he's uh, Hasselhoff's cousin because after he hits the ball, he runs in slow motion. <laughs> he's undulating, he's got the boob action, and it's very, it's true. That felt good. According to new research that just was released, drunk monkeys, <laughs> drunk monkeys behave very similar to drunk people. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, the only difference is drunk people don't crap in their hands and then throw it at the bartender. <laughs> uh, ex except Mickey Rourke, but... Uh, <laughs> I saw him do it. All right. Uh, it was a wild night. Finally, last thing I'll mention, speaking of celebrities, this week, uh, Sylvester Stallone admitted that earlier in his career, he took cash payments in exchange for smoking Brown and Williamson cigarettes in some of his movies. It's a true story. And actually, I checked out some of his old movies this morning, and I noticed some stuff I'd never seen before. Take a look at this. It was just stunned me. I just, <laughs> I was amazed that you can see. Good. The end of the movie, he puts out the cigarette and then he's excited, yeah. All right, let's discuss tonight's show. We have a fantastic show for you this evening. Uh, very funny man, good friend, always a great guest. He's from the best damn sports show, period, on Fox Sports Net. Tom Arnold is here. No one bears their soul like Tom Arnold. He gets it all out there. Probably the, most, uh, probably the most famous film critic in the world, uh, Roger Ebert, is on the program. <laughs> what do you say is the most famous? Get the thumbs up, the thumbs down. You'll see that thumb. And then uh, we have with us a very special guest. She's a 76-year-old filmmaker. She's the queen of sexploitation movies. <laughs> and she's still going strong. Doris Wishman is on the show. And right over here, in my opinion, the king of sexploitation, Max Weinberg, the Max Weinberg. So, Max! Thanks for playing that beer song up front. Yeah. Uh, you know, before we do anything tonight, I want to share something with you that I just saw today for the first time. Uh, we didn't make this up. This is absolutely true. Our associate director on the show, Maureen Smith, has a son who's about to have his first Holy Communion. And I don't know if, how many of you have had a Holy Communion. Uh, I did. 
I, if you're Max, I uh, know. <laughs> yes. Huh? No, but why? <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, you, when you're Catholic, you got to have your first communion, and Maureen Smith's son is about to have his first communion. And somebody, uh, I don't know if this is a church or who, gave him a catalog. This is real. It's, the, it's a catalog called My First Holy Communion. And it's a catalog of stuff that you can buy if you're a kid. And there's a lot of it's really sweet stuff. There's like little cards in here and, and little, you know, sort of fun religious Catholic artifacts that you can buy if you're about to have your your first communion, and I, we were flipping through it, and then Maureen showed us something, and I thought, I have to share this with the people in America who watch our show. We did not make this up. This is 100% true, I swear on my life. There's a page here that's entitled Inspirational Sports Statues that, that are for sale. You can buy these, all right, because this is what they think that kids want. And these are sports statues. Look at this first one here. There's... <laughs> There's Jesus teaching some kids to play baseball. Let's keep moving here. There's Jesus. Jesus and track, it's called. Jesus is in second place. Apparently, he ate about three hours before the race, and he's regretting it. This, that one's called Jesus and track. Let's go to the next one. Here we have Jesus and basketball. And I didn't like this. Jesus is taunting them with the ball. It's Jesus, and he's like, come on, come on, what's the matter? They want to, oh, no, no, no. Check this next one out. This is called Jesus and hockey. And man, he is determined to get that puck. Then look over here, we have Jesus and soccer right there. That's a nice one. Jesus is always hogging the ball. There's, that's the theme. And then I thought this last one was the most interesting. Look at this, Jesus and football. Now here's what bothers me. Number 21 is tackling Jesus. Jesus? Number 21 is going to hell real fast. <laughs> get a clothesline Jesus and then get up and be like, oh no. Also, I, I, I can't forget this. At the bottom it says also available. These are statues that aren't pictured, but are also available. And we're not making this up. There is Jesus and ballet. <laughs> Jesus and golf, Jesus and Taekwondo. And then the last one, Jesus and skiing. I wanna... Jeff, uh, Jeff, we have to order Jesus and Taekwondo. <laughs> I am going to, we're, we're get, can, do you think we can get Jesus in Taekwondo? I mean, if we just order it like anybody else, we're, we'll probably get it. I want to show America Jesus in Taekwondo. <laughs> so stay tuned. We're going to, I don't know how much they are. All the statues are 1995. So I think for 1995, we'll see Jesus kicking some ass. <laughs> It'd be great if it was just him driving someone's jaw up into their brain. That's just me, yeah. All right, well, anyway, we'll get that. Uh, now, folks, uh, I want to digress for just a moment here. I want to take a, a, just a second here at the top of the show and give a very special thank you to our studio audience, because without you, we could not do this show. And I want to give them a hand. Now, that's fine. That's OK. That's good. Now. That's all right. Now, some people think that's just a cheap ploy to get a lot of applause or something. It is. But there's another reason that I mention it. We have discovered, you know, that the audience is just very important to the show. They're, they're very integral to how the show goes and how well it, it looks when it's finally uh, shown to the viewer at home. However, we've also discovered uh, many people who come to see our show often have questions 
beforehand, before they ever see the program, like where am I supposed to go? How do I get tickets? Where do I sit? How is this whole thing going to happen? So we thought it would be a good idea to create a little instructional video to help answer some of these frequently asked questions. A video that we can show to people so that way we don't have to answer these questions anymore and the audience will be better informed when they show up. So folks, if you're planning on coming to see the show live, this little film will give you some idea of what to expect. Enjoy. Hey there. So you're going to see Late Night with Conan O'Brien. You wanted to see Rosie or Letterman, but you couldn't get tickets. That makes you a typical audience member. I see you've arrived at Rockefeller Center. Head on in. Inside, you may see some NBC celebrities. Hey, there's lovable SNL cast member Rachel Dratch. <laughs> Fame changes some people. Why, there's Rachel's castmate Horatio Sands. Why not ask him for an autograph? Put that in your scrapbook. Now, go find Jonathan Hefter, who handles the tickets for late night. That's John there. Wave your hand over his glazed, lifeless eyes to get his attention. When that doesn't work, simply rifle through his pockets. There's your ticket. Remove any loose change, cell phones, and car keys and give them to the NBC security guard. Then walk through the metal detector. Oh, didn't see that coming. Find the special elevator that takes you up to late night. Well, aren't you lucky? You get to ride up to the studio with late night's announcer, Joel Goddard. Just ignore him. Joel lacks social skills and often invades personal space. Uh-oh, looks like Joel's lost complete touch with reality. Just go around him. Once inside, you'll probably expect a free mug or t-shirt. You won't get one. Just find yourself a seat. The pre-show warm-up features a hilarious routine from comedian Brian McCann. Don't take it personally, Brian hates himself. Next, Max Weinberg and the Max Weinberg 7 will roll in. During the show, they'll play music. Before the show, they prefer to dance. Now it's time for the star of the show, Conan O'Brien, to come out. He'll spend the first few minutes screaming at his assistant. Then he'll...